Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The first point is for us to seek forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly, whether you feel you've committed a sin or not. Sometimes we think, okay, the day went well, I didn't commit a sin. Alhamdulillah, thank Allah that you feel that way, but still seek Allah's forgiveness. Taking cue from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherein we are taught that he used to seek forgiveness between 70 to 100 times according to the differing narrations. Why would he do that when he did not commit the sin? In order for us to learn a lesson that the istighfar, the seeking of forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens so many other doors that we perhaps would not even know. So if I seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm acknowledging that Allah is the owner of forgiveness. I am worshipping Allah in a unique way. I am making it clear to myself and to all those around me who may have known that I'm seeking forgiveness or at least to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I'm a person who is in desperate need of my maker. So it would help you develop. It makes you feel a little bit better as you continue to seek the forgiveness of Allah. And did you know that when we speak of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we talk of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people feel that the only way to engage in dhikr is to say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. That is one way, but it's not the only way. We can also engage in istighfar. We can also fulfill salah, you know, that which is voluntary. Sometimes what happens with us is we take a look at the duties placed on our shoulders by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we think to ourselves, okay, I will fulfill the duty. So come time for salah and I quickly go to the masjid, I get it over and done with. Literally that word, over and done with, which means I consider it a duty and I fulfilled it. That was my duty and I walked away and we still feel a little bit uneasy sometimes because something within us tells us, do you know what? Yes, you fulfilled the duty, but you could have done much better than that. When a person considers it an honor to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he or she arrives at a totally different level of link with the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I fulfilled my five salah. And I considered it a duty, it was done. But I fulfilled my five salah over and above an obligation, I considered it an honor. Now I will arrive early, now I will take my time, now I will be dressed appropriately, now I will make sure that I take others with me. You know, to encourage others to come for the salah, the tathweeb that is spoken about sometimes where the adhan is gone, and now I'm telling people, come, let's go for salah, let's go. I, want, I will get a reward, not just for myself, but for everyone else who has come as a result of my encouragement to that particular salah. Why am I doing that? I've seen the benefit. It's an honor to be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to share this goodness with everyone else. In that particular case, you know the feelings that you feel within your heart of being distant from Allah, perhaps, you know, the narrowing of the heart when a person has committed sin, all this begins to become deleted one after the other. The hadith speaks of how immediately upon committing a sin, you follow it up with a good deed so that that sin is wiped out. This is speaking of the minor sins, obviously. The major ones require specific repentance. So if a person, for example, happens to have done something wrong, say you didn't control your gaze as you were meant to be, and immediately after that you, you engage in istighfar or you do a good deed, you engage in a charity, you go to the masjid, you read two rakaat of salah and so on, it wipes out those sins and you begin to, be, to feel much better, much better. So this is why we say your company plays a big role in how you feel as well. If you have spiritual company that is really good, that continues to remind you in a beautiful way, sometimes, you know, the friends you keep, they don't have to tell you fulfill salah. They just say, we're going for salah. And in fact, even without saying it, they start walking towards the masjid. Because you are so close, you would feel so odd if you were the only one sitting back and telling them, okay, you guys go, I'm sitting back. Well, you're not friends then, isn't it? So if you have good company, the way you speak, the way that you spend your time will all be in a correct way, thereby uh, seeking solution for or achieving solution for what was asked in the question. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. Ameen.